Overspending on Amazon advertising can be very scary, and I'm guilty of doing this myself, particularly in the early days when I was trying to market my book and I didn't really have a good understanding of how Amazon advertising works. And these days, the Amazon advertising seems to be getting more expensive. But in this video, we're going to be talking through what um, are things that you know can cause people to overspend, something or a couple of things that I don't like about Amazon advertising, um, and things that we need to be careful of when we are marketing our books. My name is Romney, and thank you very much for joining me on my YouTube channel. If you haven't been to this channel before, it's all about creating, building, and scaling your self-publishing business. And I'm also the creator of the Publishing Accelerator, low and no content publishing course. And if that's of interest to you, please check out the links below. So in a moment, I'm gonna go into a presentation and show you a few things about Amazon advertising and even my experience with Amazon advertising as well. So let's jump into that now. It seems to me that one of the biggest concerns that people have when it comes to Amazon advertising is overspending. And they have issues in regards to uh, the, the bid amount, uh, how much to budget, how they should pause an ad, uh, how to optimize, all those kinds of things. But the advertising overspend is something that can really cripple you. If you're working hard to market your book, but you have a budget and you run out of that budget, then it can be quite you know, disappointing when you feel that you're not getting any traction in regards to your Amazon advertising. So let me just cover a few things that I've experienced over my journey regarding Amazon ads. And also I'm gonna be talking about a couple of things that really do frustrate me about the platform, uh, particularly when it comes to invoicing and payments as well. So let's move to the next slide. So what's my experience been like with Amazon advertising? Well, when I first started, I had some high content books. And if you're not sure about my journey, I originally started with high content books, books of around about 20 to 30,000 in word, uh, word count. And I did start to do some Amazon advertising uh, with those books. And I really was very experienced. I, I was setting my budget too high and my spend amount was just getting out of control and I was spending far more than any book sales that were coming in. And I thought originally that when I saw the revenue that was being generated on the platform of Amazon ads, that that's what I was gonna get in my pocket, where in fact that was the total revenue of the book sale and not the royalty amount, which might be, say if you're selling your book for um, say $10, the royalty might be $2.85. And so that's something that you can get caught out in regards to Amazon advertising. But let's have a look at some of the spending that I was doing. I'm gonna have show a few from uh, the first year when I was publishing in 2020 and one of the more recent ones as well. And the amount that I was actually spending uh, in regards to the Amazon ads. And so these are just some of the invoice totals that I've been receiving. Now with Amazon ads, they usually start uh, by, um, so when you first start, they might invoice you initially for maybe a hundred US dollars just to ensure and test, might even be less, 50 US dollars, just to ensure and test that your credit card details are legitimate and that the processing is going to occur um, for them, for Amazon. So in uh, July 2020, the uh, amount was 550 US dollars. And what ends up happening once you Amazon advertising, if you uh, regularly advertise and they can see that your payments are being made, they increase the total to about the 550 US dollar mark when they invoice you. So you might hit that 550 halfway through a month, you might you mightn't hit it at all, or it might be three quarters of the way through the month and you'll get an invoice for that amount. Then you get a secondary invoice that will require you to, to pay the remainder of the month. So initially I was $550 paying for July 2020, then another one for $550.13 from July to August. That was, see that period was only two weeks. Uh, and then I had to pay the remainder of August as well, which is probably about another 550 if I look back on the records. Then in September 2020, that was close to a month. That was another 550 US dollars. And here's a more recent one in August 2020. Uh, so that was from the 2nd to the 26th of August, another 550 US dollars. And that doesn't include my UK and my Canadian advertising spend. 
And also for me being Australian, the US dollar is much stronger than the Australian dollar. So 550 US dollars in Australian dollars is about $700. And that can really hurt when it hits your credit card and you're trying to get book revenue in. And for example, on the 13th or you know, 31st of July to the 13th of August, I got hit with a 550 US dollar invoice just after two weeks. And that can really be hard because you're trying to get cash flow moving through your KDP business. So let's move to the next slide to talk through a couple of other things that I want to discuss as part of this video. So what are the key reasons why we overspend? Well, there's a few factors. Firstly, it's inexperience. Secondly, people aren't uh, reviewing their ads and what they call optimizing their ads. So they're not removing keywords that are overspending. Uh, their bids are too high and uh, they're trying to rank high with their bids and therefore compared to what their book cost is, their spend and their clicks are way too high and they don't set a reasonable budget. When you're first starting, you might want to set a budget of $5. Now, if you've got 150 keywords but, you know, and, and you've got a, a click of around about 18 cents, well, that $5 budget gets eaten up pretty quickly by those keywords. And you might only have, you know, three or four keywords um, that might be clicked on. Uh, and there goes your ad spend. And then it's paused for the remainder of the day until the next day occurs where your $5 budget will kick in again. We also need to consider the time of the year that we're advertising as well. We, um, at the time of filming this now, uh, we've moved through quarter four, the busiest time of the year, and many people spend a lot of money trying to get sales during the Christmas period, December generally. Uh, well, of course it's December. Christmas is in December. <laughs> um, but we need to be careful because the overspend amount can really cripple our cash flow when we're looking at our KDP business. And so they're just a, key, a few key things reasons why people uh, overspend and you need to ensure that you have a spend amount in mind that you think is going to be reasonable and taking consideration that when you are spending that you need to think for the long term of your books but also know that if your keywords are overspending you need to monitor them carefully and it might be every couple of days just to pause keywords the hard thing is that Data can be delayed by 12 hours as well as part of your Amazon advertising. So it's really hard to optimize sometimes when there is the delay in data. But let's talk about a couple of things that I don't like as well about Amazon advertising. And so my biggest frustration with Amazon ads is that Amazon will invoice you at the end of every 30 days unless you reach that limit like I showed you before where they'll invoice you as soon as you hit your cap or your limit of say 550 US dollars if you're on the on the top uh, level and they'll invoice you every 30 days but your royalties aren't due until 60 days following the end of the period of time so let me give you a little bit of an example of what I mean uh, about that and how that again can be a, a real deal breaker when it comes to your cash flow. Uh, so let's have a look at this example. I'm going to give an example of say a December sales period and then when you would be paid your royalties but then the spend that you'd have to make in regards to your Amazon advertising. And so as I mentioned KDP royalties are paid every 60 days but KDP invoice adds for every 30 days. So there lies a little bit of a problem that we've got in regards to um, our business cash flow for our publishing, particularly when you're starting out. If you were, uh, if you started in on January 1st for your publishing and you had to wait 60 days before you got paid for your royalties, but you spent money on ads for January and February, then you're already out of pocket for those two months before your first royalties come in. And I experienced that myself. So let's look at this example. If you sold $500 worth of books in December and you spent $180 on ads during that same month, you would be charged your $180 at the end of December. 
but your book royalties wouldn't be paid until the end of February. But you'd also need to pay for any advertising you've completed in February as well. So let's have a look and see how that works out regarding your money and how much you're spending and how much you're getting in and when that will occur. So over a 90 day period, you would get your book royalties after 60 days. So your December payment of $500 would, wouldn't be paid until the end of February. But with your Amazon advertising, uh, your invoice every 30 days. So therefore, you would get your initial invoice for $180. End of January, you would get another invoice. Um, you know, Let's just say you spent $212 on ads. You decide to increase it a little bit more. And then end of February, your gain advertised during that month. And let's just say it was $125. So your total bill for your Amazon ads will collectively be $517. And you would then get your $500 royalty payment. But you'd be $17 in the red, even though you have been operating for another couple of months post that December period or that payment. So there lies a bit of an issue for you that you need to be careful of when you do spend. And my advice would be to slowly build up your Amazon advertising spend but just make sure you don't overspend and are playing catch up for the next three to four months while you wait for your royalties to come in. And that was the issue I had. I was spending three to four hundred dollars in the first two to three months of when I first started on the books that I had published. And I was forever playing catch up because the every time I got the book royalties in, I was having to use that to pay the Amazon advertising back. And even though I should consider it as an investment, at that point in time, it was really hard because I was probably overspending when I shouldn't have, and I should have been better at optimizing, but I just didn't have the knowledge. So please spend some time to research more, um, complete a course about Amazon, Amazon advertising. Uh, I've got 12 lessons in my course that I talk about Amazon advertising and optimizing, but there are other ways as well. There's a podcast called The Ad Badger, and I've been listening to The Ad Badger for uh, quite a long time now, and they've got some great uh, content in there about Amazon advertising as well. Uh, so let's go to the next slide and get close to finishing this video up. So what are some tricks or what are some techniques you can use to ensure that you avoid overspending? Well, firstly, set yourself a budget. That's, that's something that's very simple to do. Just make sure you set a, a sensible budget that you can stick to. Your books um, in regards to the niches that you have your books in, the books that are more competitive, of course, are going to be more expensive to advertise. So therefore, it's even more important to find those niches which do have low competition, and you can actually get into those niches and spend a lot less because there's less competition. Therefore, it's gonna be much better to do. Uh, and also, when you get to busy times of the year, like November, December, when things do uh, start to crank up regarding advertising and the competition, you probably could start advertising a little bit earlier so you get your book ranked a bit earlier therefore you're not being part of the mob mentality that are all advertising at the same time forcing the price up as well uh there are a few things and of course knowledge and 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 under an understanding a better understanding of amazon advertising your increased knowledge will allow you to drive down your spend because you'll be able to optimize better and you'll have a better understanding of when you should be reviewing your keywords, what keywords you should be putting into your campaigns, making sure you've got relevant keywords in your campaigns because if you have irrelevant ones, then they might get clicks when really you shouldn't have them in your campaign at all. But understand that I too have frustrations, continued frustrations with uh, the Amazon advertising. I feel I'm getting a better grasp, grasp of it and my ACOS is certainly a lot, lot lower than what it used to be. I'm averaging around about 20 to 25% ACOS now with my ads, but that's just come through the experience that I've had and I'm really wanting to help um, all of you to uh, increase your knowledge around Amazon advertising. So I hope this video has helped. Uh, and I'll just conclude now. So I'm hoping that you actually gain some good information from this video. 
Amazon advertising is something that I really encourage you to do, but you just need to be very careful with how you spend your money, set a really strong budget, know your limitations, and really um, invest time to get to know the platform of Amazon advertising. Because there's plenty of things that you can learn by experimenting on different markets that might be cheaper as well, such as uh, the UK or even Australia, and try to uh, get into Amazon ads slowly and don't go too hard too early when you don't know um, as much as you probably should when you do start your Amazon advertising campaigns. Uh, so thank you very much for watching. Uh, remember, if you want to look further into the Publishing Accelerator Low and No Content Publishing course, just check out the links below and there will be a short video after this about the course. Uh, and also remember, if you have liked this video, to give it a thumbs up, subscribe and hit that notification bell so you're made aware of more videos that are great. So until I make my next video, I'll see you then.